Welcome to the Bet MGM studio for Titans football with Brian Callahan, presented by SeatGeek. I'm Mike Keith. The Titans fall to the Green Bay Packers 48 hours ago. Final score, 30-14. to 14. Let's bring in the head coach, Brian Callahan. This one almost totally in the rearview mirror now. Final thoughts on last Sunday's game at Nissan Stadium. Yeah, I think there was a lot of positive things for us to keep building on. There was some things that um, were good to see. Uh, we got to find a way to stop turning the ball over, give ourselves a chance to finish a game uh, in the fourth quarter, and, and find a way to get a lead and keep it. Uh, didn't do well, a good enough job of that this past week, and um, got to find a way to win in Miami. Some performances do jump out, though. We have to start with DeAndre Hopkins. Mm -hmm. Six catches, 73 yards, his 79th career touchdown. That's a lot of touchdowns. Um, <laughs> it's, good to, it's good to have Hop back. He, um, you know, working the way back from the injury in, in the first week, second week got a little bit more, and then uh, finally got to see what uh, DeAndre is all about now. And uh, really excited to, to see that production in the game. And, again, I wish it wasn't a winning effort, but uh, made really nice plays on the ball, got open, and uh, and did what Hop has done for a long time. And uh, that's catch the football in contested spots. And it was really good to see. It was good to have him. Now we got to get him, him and Calvin to have the same game at the same time, and we'll be rolling. Again, DeAndre Hopkins making plays for the Titans and getting some things going. On the defensive side, Kenneth Murray has been close to some big plays in the first two games. In this particular contest, the linebacker eight tackles and a pair of sacks. Yeah, he keeps showing up. And every week that goes by, he makes more plays. And then him and Ernest Jones together have proven to be a very formidable pairing. And everything about the way that he plays is what we want to be about on defense. He's physical, he's fast, he's downhill, uh, makes plays in the, in, in the pressure game as a blitzer, uh, makes plays sideline to sideline, and everything about uh, him is what we were hoping to get when we, when we brought him in for agency. So it's uh, been encouraging to see that play continue. Tajay Spears is a player for the Tennessee Titans who loves to play as much as anybody on the team. Didn't yeah. know if he would be able to go last week, and he comes through with 61 total yards on six touches. Amy Wells had a chance to sit down with number two and talk a little bit about his love for the game and what he brings to the Titans. How has the, maybe the philosophy, whether it's within that room or within the offense, how has it changed a little bit? I just know for us in the room, it's like we still trying to uh, establish that identity, but we working, we working our tails off. But us in that room, like, we ain't settling. We ain't settling for nothing under greatness. Like, we, we want to hit greatness and, and achieve it. When it comes to being intentional and trying to keep yourself accountable to that standard that you're setting for yourself, how helpful is it that everybody in that room seems like they're on the same page and is matching that level of intentionality that you have. I feel like we all be intentional and we be in tune with the, with the growth of everybody. We all gonna lift each other higher and when we low, we gonna lift them up. When people talk about the Tennessee Titans, one of the things that they talk about the most is you. Tajay Spears has so much swag. Tajay Spears has so much confidence. Are you surprised that people are seeing something different in you in year two? It's amazing to see the belief that they have in me. But they on, if they don't ones that I gotta go do it, I gotta go, you know what I'm saying? I gotta go make it happen. So it, 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 it's real cool. But nah, like, I still feel like the best is yet to come. Thanks very much, Amy Wells. Tajay Spears loves to play football. We didn't know if he was gonna go last week, but the fact of the matter is he desperately wanted to play in that game against the Packers, and he shows up. And that's what you love about Tajay is, is he put it on the line for, for his teammates and um, a game-time decision and, and probably wasn't even at 100% health, but, but found a way to fight through and, and go play well for us. And again, I, I wish we could uh, get some more first downs and keep moving along because I think he's uh, due for some more carries in the run game, but he's been productive in the pass game. And you know, him and Tony are still at the I think currently both of our uh, touch leaders in, in runs runs and passes, and um, they've both done a really nice job in those phases. So got to keep getting those guys involved and finding ways for them to make plays. When Titans football with Brian Callahan continues, Titans tape, the head coach, explains the X's and O's from two of the big plays from Sunday's game. Stay with us. Titans tape is a part 
of this edition of Titans Football with Brian Callahan. Got two plays to show you, all from the first touchdown drive. Uh, both of them very interesting. The first one, a third and nine, and Tyler Boyd doing something that he's worked on with you before? Uh, he has run this route probably hundreds of times at this point. Um, it really is, a, is an inside route designed uh, to isolate him on whatever coverage is here. And he really has the freedom to either wrap a linebacker, right, to break out away from it, or he could he can wrap him in and then rip back outside. So there's he's got a lot of freedom at the top, and he knows how to run this route uh, versus multiple different looks and coverages. Um, he's done this so many, so many times, and this is what you get um, with a guy like Tyler when he, he knows the reps invest. And you can see Will trusts it. They're playing coverage on defense where they're, uh, they're, they're clouding here on the, to the passing strength, and this backside safety is pushing the number three. And so Tyler knows he has to wrap this linebacker, and Will's got to get this ball into this window before the safety gets there. And it's about as good of a throw and catch and two guys being on the same page uh, as you could ask for. Zoom. And then gets an extra eight, nine, ten yards after the catch because of uh, that placement of the ball and his ability to turn and get vertical. So what you're saying is he's not running like a curl or a post or an out. He's finding the space, and Will's going Will's gonna to wait to see what he does right there. That's what we're looking for. He's okay. got one defender to work on, knowing that there's probably another coming from the backside, but this is the area he's trying to get into uh, with his route. And you see right as well, really nice, nice job up front by those guys, just enough time. But you can see as he – it's a tight shot from the back, but that's the window. And that's third down football in the NFL – Tight windows, quick throws, timing and precision, and that's how you convert. That's big. And that third and nine was a huge play on that first drive. Yep. Gave you some momentum. Let's go to the next play, which gives us a chance to look at the touchdown. So we, we weren't sure what kind of goal line package they would be in uh, because of a new, the new coordinator there, and they had shown two different styles before. So we went into goal line to throw it for the first time with the idea that uh, we would like to have been faster with our tempo here. We, this is a speed, a speed break, we call it, where we get lined up quick and snap it as fast as we can. The official held the ball. It took a little while longer than we thought it would. Um, but the, the premise of the play is, is very simple. Um, it is a play action, slide protection. Everyone's going back a gap. You get a corner route by him. You get a flat route by Chig. And then the back is going to go right, block that edge. And it's really just your simple high-low. And you just read whatever one pops first. Um, you have a chance to hit. And you can see there the fake gets just enough of the linebacker to bite. He's got his eyes in the backfield, so he's not sure which one to cover. And you see Nick on the, uh, racing to the back of the end zone on that corner route. And really great job by Will, putting the ball in a place where this defender can't retrace and make a play on it. So he puts it in, a, in, in sort of a back shoulder spot, kind of as quick and fast as he can to get it into the void. When I watched the tape, I had no idea how close the linebacker gets to knocking the ball away if it's not thrown back shoulder. Correct. And what happens, too, is if, if he tries to throw this ball to the front side with some pace, he's in great position to intercept it. If you put too much air on it, he can fall off underneath it. And so that's really the only throw you had there was that style of throw. So it was a really nice job by Will, you know, knowing and understanding where the, where the void in the defense was and, and getting the ball to Nick very quickly. The end zone shot's really interesting to watch Tony Pollard step up and occupy Gary, which is a big deal right there because it's going to come. Here's obviously Tony Pollard headed this way, as you said. Yep. And like, it's a full gap protection. We're, we're selling the run. It's an action pass. And as, we, as, as Nick releases, this is the free player and Chig releases. So we pull him out and him out, and that's the one guy left. And his job for Tony right, is to go manage that block, which he does a great job of. Most of the time, we end up telling those guys to cut that block because that's not uh, the matchup that you want generally one-on-one. <laughs> no. uh, -on -one. So in these particular action passes, you want the running back to try to go cut his leg uh, and get his hands down so we can make this throw because it generally happens pretty quick. Um, but it's really an excellent job by Tony uh, making sure we have enough time to get that ball off. And you can see the placement of the throw in the window from this back end a little bit better. Um, that's the void is right back here. That's away from that defender's leverage, uh, and that's exactly where Will put the ball. Do you coach it that way, or is that a decision by Will? 
It's a decision by Will based on the leverage, and he knows that that is on that particular play. That is a a window where this ball can be completed, and um, and did a great job recognizing it and putting it there. Good stuff, Coach. Thanks. Yes, we love it. this segment of the show because this guy is really good at Titans tape. When we come back, seat geek sound, and I think you're gonna love it. More football, but it's from the Friday night variety. Stay with us for more Titans football with Brian Callahan, presented by Seat Geek. Titans football with Brian Callahan continues. Glad to have you with us. Fireball Fridays, a Titans high school football initiative where the Titans cause marketing team, including Titans cheer, T-Rack, and players go out in full force to support the game at the high school level. Enjoy this week's Seat Geek Sound at a recent Fireball Friday. What's up, guys? It's Gabe Judy. We're at the Fireball Friday football game of the week. Oh, you brought money tonight. That's, That's what I'm saying. You got he cash money, money on hand. That's my favorite candy. Oh, my God. I never wear my shoe again. You're never wearing it again? Never, ever, ever. How are your parents going to feel about that? They're going to frame it? They're going to be mad. They're going to be mad. They don't even know about this. Oh, OK. What's up? How you doing? Hey, Gabe. Oh, ah, a screener draw. Look at that draw. Knew it. Ooh. Oh, ooh. Hey, that boy don't made a play. I ain't gonna lie. My high school team, like when, when I coach, we're gonna be so cold. Third and 15, they, they still got three. Draw. But it, coach Denar would be happy with me right now. Coach Denar would be like, he in the game plan. He in the game plan. Oh, I did. I did. I did. Hey, hey, get your, get your, come on, muscle, big muscle. Come on, thumb. It's a good looking group there and something really special. Of course, the Tennessee Titans love high school football. You know that. We have been the sponsors of Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award since 2007. Since way before that, we've done Coach of the Week Awards. Uh, this is an organization committed to promoting high school football. We're very proud of that. Brian, why is it important in your mind for an organization like ours to be out talking up the high school game? There's nothing like high school football. It's, it's something that um, I have a lot of fondness for. I, I was a high school coach before my professional career started. Um, the impact that high school sports makes, uh, particularly high school football for uh, young men, is is pretty remarkable. And what the coaches do and how they can influence um, these 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 kids' lives is um, something that you don't take for granted. And the fact that the Titans go out and support that just gives gives more life and credence to the mission uh, of high school sports and allows us to be a huge part of the community in that regard because I know high school football is an important part uh, of this Tennessee community in general and um, that part is really cool to see and it's good for our players to be visible um, for these kids and to let them know that they can be them one day too and that there's a, there's a path to get to, to get to the NFL and um, to have our presence there is, is really, really neat. Yeah, love those Fireball Fridays. When Titans football with Brian Callahan presented by SeatGeek returns, Big Jeff, Jeffrey Simmons, started his foundation, give him a reason in hopes to make an impact on the Nashville community and beyond. Watch him have a special event next on the show. Ever since the Tennessee Titans drafted Jeffrey Simmons in 2019, offenses around the NFL have felt the defensive tackle's impact on the field. Now number 98 is looking to make an even greater impact off the field. His efforts are the subject of this week's Epic Western Genuine article. Tonight, we're here as my first fundraiser that I'm doing for my foundation. Give them a reason. Tonight, I'm just trying to raise a lot of awareness and try to raise a little money for my goal. And my goal is to 
Pour to our kids, give our kids more opportunity, especially here in our community in Nashville. I was a little nervous coming in, but like I said, this it, it's been unbelievable so far just to see a lot of people with the same mindset and the same mission as me right now. So like what you do off the field, see more of Most definitely. That's what so it's we, about. We as lifelong fans, we appreciate like y'all are in the community. Most definitely. Just keep doing what you're doing, man. Yeah, it's all about trying to leave that, that mark on people. When you walk out the room, what are they saying about you? Yeah, that's how I try to carry myself. So how do you have the same mission as myself? And that's the reason why you guys are here tonight, because we share the same mission. We're trying to better our community, especially our youth. We know they're our future. So at the end of the day, I want to say thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. It means a lot to me. This community means so much to me. Um, you know, my goal for this community, especially here in Nashville, just to, like I said, bring more opportunity for our youth. Um, I want to do something hands on. I want to get a center here. That's the reason why I want to keep trying to raise some money. I want to get a Jeffrey Simmons uh, center here, right here in Nashville. Go! We're looking for the first five people that say, I want to partner with Jeff. I believe in him. I believe in our community and what he's doing. And I want to bless the foundation with $1,000, and you're going to get this signed jersey. You got it. I got one right here, so uh, there's another one. Did you all right here? Thanks. Did we miss anybody? I want to say thanks to everyone here to see this many people here for supporting me. This means a lot to me. He said he was going to do it from the minute he was drafted, and for the last five years, Jeffrey Simmons has continuously looked to help the community in different ways, whether it be in Tennessee or back in Mississippi. Walter Payton, man of the year for the Tennessee Titans a year ago. So important to see players do that, particularly when they're players of his level on the field, as an example. It, uh, it's something that needs more credit, I think, to the guys around the NFL in general, but particularly here, just to see the work that Jeffrey has done, um, how much it means to them to, to better the community, to give uh, kids an avenue to have success and chances that they might not otherwise have. It's remarkable, and it's a work that I think when you look at players around the league, how much they care about the communities that they, that they work in um, should give people a reason to really be proud to have someone like Jeff representing the Titans, um, both as a player and a person off the field. All right, Jeffrey Simmons, good work. After the break, Brian Callahan shares his thoughts on the Titans' upcoming opponent. That's the Miami Dolphins. We'll be right back with Titans football with Brian Callahan, presented by CQ. Callahan's first look is presented by Nissan. We play in six days, Monday night football at Miami. And when you think about these Dolphins, you think about the speed on offense. Devon A-Chain is where it starts, and obviously we'll get to the receivers in just a minute. Uh, incredible speed that allows them to do uh, a whole lot schematically that not many people in the league can do because of uh, the dynamic ability of all of these players, uh, A-Chain included. Just the ball in his hand, he's, he can score from anywhere on the field at any point. Um, it's, it's, it's scary um, because of their explosive ability to be able to score points. And we've seen it over the last few years, uh, just how well they've been able to use him in all the different roles. Um, and he's a fantastic player with the ball in his hands. They get it to him a lot of different ways. And then, of course, you've got the next guy that we'll see, and that is Cheetah, Tyreek Hill. Man, there might not be anybody <laughs> more dynamic than him. Um, you know, just the, the production he's had for the entirety of, of his career, He's the same way, where any time, any place on the field, he might be able to just go score. And you might even have the angle on him and he still might be able to score. And that's one of the things that makes these guys so dynamic is they're very disciplined in the passing game. They can catch and transition. They get the ball in these guys' hands in space and they make it really, really hard uh, to get them down on the ground because they're, they're always on the move and they all move very fast. Um, again, great scheme, great usage of the players and, and they really make it hard to play defense against all of them. You have to respect that speed. And then, of course, there's Jalen Waddle, and he's not exactly the slow guy. No. <laughs> he's that guy that, that makes it even harder because now they have two very similar players that they can use um, in very similar roles. And they're both capable of scoring at any point. You add an A-chain with that, that grouping as well, and now they, they become a, a three-headed monster that you have to account for on every single play. And um, it's a... It's a dynamic offense over the last few years. They haven't started uh, the way that I think they've hoped to start their season. And, uh, but you, you see, you look back at the tape, 
last year, year before, they're, they're as good of an offense as there is in football. All right, and of course, they've got some stars on defense that we don't quite have time to delve into. Uh, Jalen Ramsey, a local guy, and also Calais Campbell, a guy who's headed to the Hall of Fame. Complete team, big challenge coming up on Monday Night Football. We'll remind you that next Monday night, the game is at 6.30 at Hard Rock Stadium. If you listen to us on Titans Radio, which we hope you do, we're on the air with Titans Countdown at 5. For the head coach, Brian Callahan, I'm Mike Keith. Good night, everybody.